Today we are going to look at one of my favorite guitar solos ever, I think. Uh, it's Blake Mills uh, playing uh, it's some kind of all-star jam band at the uh, Crossroads festivals. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's half of Booker T and the MGs and then an all-star cast with a lot of famous people. <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a great performance, but Blake Mills really stands out to me. Uh, he's got an awesome, real nasally uh, guitar tone and um, just plays uh, the craziest, uh, craziest licks on top of this regular 12 bar blues, you know. Uh, so it's it's great performance uh, and I got to show you how to play it. <laughs> I just transcribed it properly yesterday and uh, yeah, I got, got excited about it <laughs> because there's some kind of bizarre bizarre licks going on here but anyways it's it's just about 40 50 seconds long or something so it's a short solo but it's packed with a lot of information and uh, cool things so let's let's get on with it <laughs> I saw some, some comment on the video saying that his guitar tone sounds kind of like an organ and it kind of does, <laughs> it's really cool. It helps playing the, these kind of licks because a, a, like a typical organ uh, thing is to uh, hold down one note and uh, move uh, the notes around it. Here he is, uh, he's got the, um, this F note ringing. Uh, pretty much all the way through these phrases here. And then hammer on the flat five to the five. So that's uh, the F note here is on the 10th fret of the G string. And then you hammer on from the 12th to the 13th of the B string. And then sneaks in the flat seven on the um, 11th fret of the E string. And then that phrase is uh, you pull off from the 12th from, to the 11th on the B string. So that is... And pretty much get a hybrid picket to, to get the right sound. So it's pick and middle finger at the same time. And then the minor third is on the uh, 13th fret of the uh, G string. Kind of like that, it's awesome sound. And it sounds like it sneaks in the high high root note there too, the high F on the 13th fret of the E string. I think he's he's kind of playing. Uh, he's including that high E string somewhat. Uh, it doesn't ring as clear as the other notes, but I th think it might be when he's pulling the the ring finger off from the uh, flat five to the uh, four there. Uh, it might be kind of um, hitting the uh, E string to make it ring. Because you can sort of hear it, but not not so clearly. I think that's what he's doing at least. Maybe he's just hitting the E string too. So he's ending up... Uh, there on the uh, that F minor, uh, the part of the F minor chord there is the uh, uh, flat three and uh, five of the chord. So that is, uh, to back up just a little bit there, that chord that he's creating there is of course the uh, four chord of the blues uh, 12 bar. So that is the B flat chord. Just 
uh, the F to the E flat there on the G string. And then... Bend the uh, F note up to G uh, when it goes to the C chord. Because that becomes the 5 of the C. That's why, why that works, because when you're on the one chord, it might sound strange to bend the root up to what will be the nine or the, sec the second degree of the scale. Um, but when you go to the five chord, that works beautifully. And then he lets down the bend, do some sort of staccato uh, thing there. Then he's kind of... <laughs> He's kind of fumbling with, with the notes there, so I can't really tell what he exactly what he was going for, but I'm gonna guess it was something like something like that, I think, but this is pretty much guessing. He's around that that position at least. Something like that. So that is kind of using the G minor shape there. Kind of bending that G, maybe, but I'm pretty much guessing here. <laughs> That's the craziest lick of the solo. It's, it's so cool. Uh, I've practiced this quite a few times since yesterday, but <laughs> I haven't really got it down to proper speed yet. But the, uh, the lick is... I'm going to try to play it first here. <laughs> so it's just crazy insane lick but it's it's over the turnaround of the 12 bar phrase um, so I'm, I'm thinking that he kind of wants to build some tension to really make that next uh, next uh, cycle of chords really uh, kind of cli climactic uh, so because he's ending up on the high root note there uh, with that bend so that's kind of a yeah it's a real tension and release thing that's why he's playing this kind of semi chromatic semi mixolydian maybe uh, uh, lick here but I'll go through the lick note for note here so it, after After that he jumps up um, an octave there to the F note again and then 12, uh, 12th fret of the B string kind of half note bend and then 11th fret of the E string 10th fret of the B string uh, you might, <laughs> might notice that that is kind of a whole tone scale thing which is that a whole tone scale will always sound bizarre, <laughs> no matter how, how you use it, pretty much. You know, that is that's a strange sound, but awesome for building tension. But after after that part, it's third and fret B string, uh, third and fret G string. 10th fret B string, 10th fret G string, 13th fret G string, 12th fret D string, 10th fret G string, 10th fret D string, 12th fret D string, 11th fret A string. And then at the turning point here where he's, he's starting to go up again, he does a, a pretty big leap there, back to the 10th fret of the G string back again to the uh, 11th fret of A string and then it starts moving up up the, sc uh, the scale pretty much so so you just use the same notes but instead of skipping back and forth you just move through here the first part then you include on the B string here uh, when you reach the 10th fret you move to the 11th fret 13th fret and then back on the G string, 12th fret, 
11th fret uh, B string. Then I hammer on here. Uh, I think Blake slides at this point, but I hammer on to the 13th fret and then slide up to the 15th. I think he does the opposite. He slides from the 11th to the 13th and then hammer on to the 15th. It's same thing pretty much. You, you, it's it goes by so quickly you can't even really tell. But anyways, 11, 13, 15, uh, 13th fret uh, E string and then bend up the 16th fret of the B string to the root. So that is a whole lot of numbers just going by. <laughs> but I hope you, hope you uh, caught it all here. Uh, I'll play it real slow one more time and uh, you can use the uh, the slow down button on the uh, YouTube player if you if you need to <laughs> still one of the craziest licks I've uh, ever ever transcribed pretty much <laughs> Let's let's continue here. Uh, so he goes up and bends that. Um, and then it's just falling down the scale from the high notes, uh, the high F. So it's 13 on the E string, 16th B string, 11th B string, and then. You hit the, both the B and E string, barring the uh, 13th fret, but hammer on on the 15th fret of the B string to get that sound. And then move down, uh, move down to the uh, 13th fret of the B string, and then 15th fret uh, G string, and uh, quick, quick hammer on from the 13th fret. To the 14th fret. That will be the major third of the F chord here. So that phrase there land on the low F note there on the 15th fret of the D string. Yeah. That is uh, the higher part of the F minor pentatonic scale there, uh, including the ninth degree also. So, kind of bend vibrato on the uh, 16th, no, uh, 16th fret of the uh, E string, 15th fret. So it's 16, 15, 13, 15. 13 and then bend uh, on the B string, uh, the 16th fret, up. and then uh, 13, 15 on the E string. Hit the uh, hammer on that we used before, uh, 13th to 15th on the B string, and uh, let's check it out again. So that is the uh, kind of B flat chord shape up there on the 13th and 15th fret. You're hammering hammer on on the B string and let the uh, E string ring again there. And then move down the scale just to the, to the uh, 15th, note, uh, 15th fret of the G string. And then move down to the 13th fret. Hit the octave. On the uh, to that note uh, on the uh, 16th fret of the E string, and then still using the same same notes there. He's doing kind of a rhythmic displacement, I think it's called. There, uh, he's playing the. It's kind of uh, uh, leaving a bigger room for that note between those 
uh, falling phrases, I guess, uh, which is a cool idea to use. Playing the same lick, but at different points of the beat, pretty much. Yeah, he's, he's ending that. So that is uh, the 18th fret. You slide up to the 18th fret of the E string. 16th fret uh, E string, 18th fret B string. That's just this part of the F minor pentatonic scale. Uh, after that, I think he's playing that, right? Yeah. So that is back in the the regular F minor pentatonic shape here. You take the seventh, uh, flat seventh degree of the uh, pentatonic scale here on the 16th fret of the B string. Quick pull off to the 13th fret, and then. Uh, 16th fret of the G string, real quickly. So it's sort of a kind of triplet thing or uh, something, I guess. And then uh, the 15th fret, 13th fret, uh, 15th fret of first the G string and then the D string. So slowly it's so it's clusters of three, and you leave a little uh, rest in between. Uh, next lick here is sort of that classic rock and roll bend on the... Uh, uh, bend the four up to the five of the scale. So it's the 15th fret of the G string. Bend up a whole step, and then he's plucking uh, I guess he's using the fingers, but I'm not really sure. You can't, can't really see his right hand there. But the B and E string with... You can, you can also pick it, but... Uh, on the 13th fret. So you get that sound, and then he's doing a very quick pull-off from the um, 16th fret of the B string uh, to the 13th fret. And then let down the bend on the G string, pull it off to the 13th fret. So you get that sound. So it's a uh, it's long bend, a little rest in between, and then really, really quick um, jumps down the scale, pretty much like he did just before that. That part of the solo, uh, it's the 15th fret on the G string, uh, G string bend. Let it down, and then on the 13th fret of the G string, you bend up a whole step with your index finger. That, that's sort of a. Yeah, it, it can be hard if you're not used to it. Like I'm not. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to get that really accurately on on uh, on pitch, but doesn't really matter. Uh, So it's bend twice on the 13th fret G string and then let it down on the uh, 13th fret still. Uh, uh, 15th fret D string. Let's hear. Yeah, I think it slides uh, 15th fret to 13th fret uh, A string. Uh, 11th fret maybe. Gotta rewatch it. So, I think he's playing it like that, or it's the same notes. Uh, so it's either 11th fret B string to 13th fret G string, or 15th fret G string to 13th fret. Uh, that's the almost the end. He's just hitting an F note after that. I think. Yeah. F octaves for for ending the solo. Uh, so that is just 
10th and 13th fret, G string and E string. So that's pretty much the whole solo. Uh, it's yeah, it's an it's an awesome solo. <laughs> what else can you say about it? It's uh, for me, it's the right right combination of uh, pure blues phrasing and just some really cool odd colors in there, I guess, uh, with that. Um, That whole thing. I just love hearing those kind of phrases over a regular uh, 12 bar blues. It's really cool. It kind of reminds me of uh, things that maybe uh, Julian Lars and uh, Jim Campolongo would do too. Uh, really, really kind of using some strange sounds just to build tension and, as I said, release it then on the on the next downbeat, uh, yeah, either way. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any corrections or uh, if you have any suggestions or anything, uh, please comment down below uh, so we can see what we can do uh, with it. And um, if you want to support the channel, uh, I really appreciate appreciate if you consider either ch uh, sharing the video with with your guitar friends or. Uh, um, please subscribe, like, all that stuff, and uh, I also have a tip jar, uh, you've seen the information here on the screen, and it's also in the uh, description box below. Really appreciate it if you consider donating at least. Um, but yeah, again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.